The exciting thing about the Arvarla M11 isn't the long range or the almost 50 mile per hour top speed or the extreme hill climbing ability. And it's not even the adjustable hydraulic suspension. It's what you can do in the app to customize the scooter. These guys have taken customization to a whole new level. And so to kick off the review, I wanna start with that first. Well, most companies that have an app or even in the advanced settings, you're able to adjust the acceleration power, the top speed, and the electric brakes, but it applies to every single speed mode. There's no way to set a fast start to mode three and a slow start for mode one. That is until now. These guys have made it so you can adjust each one of the five speed modes. As you dive further into the app, you can change things like power from one to 100, the electronic brakes from levels one to five, how much the front and the rear motor gives, and even the current that each motor puts out. As you can see, as you go up in speed modes, you have more power across the board, but you don't have to go that route. This is pretty cool. So I'm still on the highest speed mode, but I set the acceleration, everything to the lowest level. And here we go. <laughs> it barely, barely takes off. But the power does ramp up and you'll eventually reach the top speed of around 50 miles per hour. There's 48. Feeling pretty good, actually. Woo! Another way that you can customize the scooter is by changing the lights. You have LED lights up the stem that light up the Arvarla M11 electric scooter, which looks pretty cool. And then the same thing on both sides of the deck. In the app, there's a ton of different colors you can choose from, and you can also change the mode. Some of the other options the app have, you've probably seen with different brands, like adjusting the power from zero to 100%. You can also turn the cruise control on or off. It's got the option to turn the ABS braking on or off. I had them turned on in the beginning, but they are actually pretty loud and kind of jerky, so I did turn them off. You can also set it to a zero or a kickstart, and then turn on the anti-theft mode. The last few things that are unique to Arvarla is that you can turn off either motor or actually shut both of them off. I don't know why you want to do that, but you could if you wanted to. On the top of the app, there's a list of all the things that could potentially go wrong with the scooter. And so if there is a problem, you can just call up customer service, tell them what icon you see, and that way they know exactly what the problem is and you don't have to send a thousand pictures and videos describing the problem. I've done that more times than I like to admit. And then the last cool thing about the app is that you can check the battery life of each cell, which I thought was just pretty cool. Never seen that feature before. Okay, so that's all the app stuff. How about the scooter? I guess I better talk a little bit about that. Starting off, I wanna talk about the power to weight ratio. First, you have two 1600 watt motors, but when you slap those on a very light frame, this is only around 60 pounds, you've got some serious torque. The company says that you can hit 53 miles per hour in eight seconds. Now, I don't know about that. I, I wasn't able to accomplish that. What I did accomplish was almost hitting 40 miles per hour in one city block. Yo. There's 11, 17. 21, 25, 32, 35, and that's it. 39 miles an hour, one block. Oh, you have got power. And then the power for hills. I was standing at the bottom of a 26% grade hill, about a half a block long, and I was able to hit 17 miles per hour at the top of that hill. Ooh, yeah. Now let's talk about the ride and the fill. And there's good and bad in this section. Starting off with the good first, everything along the handlebars is nice feeling and higher end. I'm talking about the grips, the thumb throttle, the brake levers, the control pad, the LCD screen. The handlebar high was actually a little lower than a lot of scooters in the same price range, which I actually prefer because it allows me the space to get lower when I'm going fast. The deck length and how high it is off the ground were my only two gripes I had about the scooter. My front foot was hitting this front piece here. First couple of miles, it wasn't that bad, but as I was hitting 10, 15 miles, my front toe being angled up because of this started to get a little bit sore. Now you're probably saying, Mike, why don't you just use the fin and extend that, that standing area? And I did, but when you have to use the fin mile after mile, it puts more pressure on your front foot. And so that's why I just prefer a longer deck. And then as far as the height, the good thing with that first off is if you do take this off road, you've got a ton of clearance, but being this high off the ground, your center of gravity is higher. And so the balance was just not as balancey, not as stable as I would have liked to have seen for going 49 miles an hour. I did have to hold onto the grips a little bit tighter than I usually do when going that fast. Anything that's higher off the ground like this, just the balance and handling is not the best. Now their fix for those two things is adding a steering dampener, which when I cranked all the way tight, I didn't have any speed wobble when hitting 48 miles per hour. 
Moving on to some more good stuff about the scooter, and that is the adjustable hydraulic suspension. The nice thing about that suspension is that you don't need a tool to adjust it. To test out the suspension, I kept it all the way loose, both front and back, came off a curb, and I wasn't bottoming out the shocks. It was a nice, cushy, and fluffy landing. The last thing about the ride that I wanna talk about are the huge, wide tires. My only thought as to why they did that is because they knew stability was lacking a little bit, and so they wanted to create a little bit more surface hitting the ground. I could be wrong on that, but that's just what I've deducted from my deductions. Now let's talk about range because Arvarla offers this scooter in two different battery sizes. This is the 60 volt 35 amp hour. For a few hundred bucks less, you can pick it up in a 26 amp hour. And then the battery has the BMS system. So overcharging, overcurrent, all that stuff you don't have to worry about. There's two charge ports, one on each side, and they only send one charger, which takes 12 hours for a full recharge. And once it was charged up, I took it on a range test. My average speed was 30 miles per hour and my app recorded 28.88 miles with 3,008 feet of elevation gain. I took this up the mountain because the battery just wouldn't die. So I'm like, well, I don't wanna ride this for hundred miles. So I'm gonna take it up some steep terrain to, to drain that battery life. These guys on their website talk about making a scooter that has a perfect balance between speed and range. And I think they've done it. That is a long range and a fast speed. Last few things I wanna talk about are the brakes. You do have very nice, smooth, powerful hydraulic brakes. The only thing I didn't like is that the right side controls the front brake, left side the rear, so that is opposite if you're here in the US. The levers also have motor cutoff, and when you press them, the tail light does flare up, just like a car. The M11 also has turn signals, and I like what they've done. Most scooters just have a light here in the front and in the back, but with this, the whole side blinks, which is kinda of cool. And the turn indicator does show up on the screen, so you don't have to worry about leaving that blinker on, looking like a fool as you're driving down the road, which I've done a couple times. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions about the M11, hit me up in the comments. As always, I appreciate you guys hopping on here and checking out my content and take care.